Okay, so I've just gotten off a plane from Beijing. It was a two and a half hour flight, and we've arrived here in Jinjiang. Now, Jinjiang is a town not very far away from Xiamen in Fujian, and I'm really excited and quite nervous to be here because actually this place has a very special connection to me and to my family. I would like to introduce you to a man who is very kindly picked us up from the airport. He's not just anybody; he's actually the cousin. Um, of, of my father, and um, this is uh, well, my father is Uncle Ding. Uncle Ding is my Quite overwhelming. I knew that I was coming here to meet um, my relatives, but when you actually um, meet somebody who you have a deep connection to, I'm kind of lost for words, really. Welcome to this special edition of Travelog. Here we journey to Jinjiang, Fujian, taking a little detour through my family's past. So we're heading out to dinner, and I'm quite excited because it's going to be quite a special meal for me. Anyway,、um, the reason is, for the first time while we're here, I'm meeting my Philippine uncle, Uncle Sixto, and I'm really excited to meet him because he's the reason that I was able to get in touch with all my relatives here in Fujian in the first place. So it's the first time I'll be meeting him and his family, and that would、we'll、be all sitting together. So it should be really good. My grandfather was from Xinjiang, but when he was a boy, he left the country to make a living in the Philippines. We'd lost contact with our Fujian relatives for decades. Now I'm about to meet the son of my grandfather's older brother and his family. My grandfather passed away 13 years ago, but is survived by two of his younger sisters. After months of searching, tonight I'm meeting one of them. This reunion had been planned for months. He,、um, he's the reason that we were able to get in touch with Goma. He helped us.、Um, lots of inconveniences and lots of help. Lots of phone calls、um, from Beijing and Sydney and the Philippines, and we were able to organise this meeting. So I'm very, very grateful for Uncle Victor and his wife Nilda. So、um, this is the first time we're meeting as well. We never set eyes on each other before, but Yang Ruhua, my grandfather's second youngest sister, made me feel like we'd always known each other. I found her to be a warm and impressive woman, a retired doctor, and the mother of Uncle Ding, who we met at the airport. She told me her older sister had already passed away, but the youngest sibling was now living in Xiamen, not too far away, and I would also get to meet her soon. After dinner, I was told stories about their childhood, and it was a happy evening, giving me not only my first taste of delicious local food, but of life in Jinjiang too. And I couldn't wait till morning to experience it for myself. Coming up next, after years of separation and months of searching, I'm reunited with my Fujian relatives. On this episode of Travelog, we venture to Jinjiang in Fujian. There, we explore the tradition and history of this seaside city, the origin of many Chinese now living all over the world, and I get to meet for the first time some special relatives of my own. Excited! Today is a really big day. I'm meeting my family in the house where my grandfather grew up here in Jinjiang. Jinjiang is a fascinating place because it's a place where you can really see people living out the customs and the history every single day. It's not just something of the past, and that's really fascinating to see. But the special reason that I'm here is because this is where my family is from, where my grandfather grew up. When I was young. Because I couldn't speak Mandarin, I never really had the opportunity to get to know him, and I always regretted that. So when I found out that his sisters were here, I thought that was a really great opportunity to to recover something 
something, you know, things are lost in the past, but maybe some things you can make the most of what's left behind. So I'm really looking forward to it, and um, it's going to be a really big day. We leave the busy city behind and head to the home village where my family is from. When we arrive, they're already waiting. A whole group of them. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Not only did I finally get to meet my grandfather's youngest sister, I got to meet her husband and their children and grandchildren who had come all the way from Xiamen. They didn't have a lot of names to remember, but titled in Chinese, each relative, for example, my second aunt's husband, is called a specific word. And to be honest, I didn't get them all right. And well, do you blame me? I think we were too happy to notice. At least I was. So we've just arrived, and this is our family um, plant house. This place is um, all of our grandparents, the great great grandparents' names are already here. Like our respect. In China, family is everything, and that day, I felt very rich indeed. Oh, oh yeah. So this particular house, my grandfather went to the Philippines, he raised the money and went back and helped to build this house. But there was more to come. Uh, this is my uncle Sixto's father's house and um, they say it has eight rooms that hasn't been very well um, preserved but we are really touching things for him to be able to see where um, his father lived in the house that his father built. Um, my auntie, my, my, grand, um, my grandfather's oldest my my auntie told me that um, when he was very old in the Philippines, um, when he was quite sick already, a few years or even shortly before he died, he asked her, um, can you tell me the, the name of the town that I grew up in? I, I can't remember. Tell me again. And she said, oh, it's called Lameza. And then she, was think she said that he said it to himself, Lameza, again and again, just so he could remember. Because um, he was afraid of forgetting where he was from. But so I think he would have really loved to, to see it. Um, and I think he would have been really happy that we had come here. And finally, my grandfather's house. So um, we're not actually sure who lives in the house at the moment, so we we can't go inside. But um, we can just sort of see around the front and. Yeah, I really can't believe this is where my grandfather grew up. He always talked about um, wishing he could come back and see it for himself. And it's overwhelming that he wasn't able to, but I had this opportunity to see it myself. So I've been told this house was built in around the 1950s or 60s. And at the time, um, people who had this kind of house were considered very wealthy or quite well off. Um, and I think it just goes to show that my grandfather and his brother really, really worked hard to, to try to contribute to the lives of their family and to, to give them a better future. So it's really wonderful to see it here, uh, the fruit of their labor and the fruit of all the sacrifices they made going away from this place.
day I felt I had received so much. So it was my turn to give my family a little something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my father recommended that we put some photos to give to us, uh, um, my grandfather's two sisters. So we put together some photos of my grandfather's life and um, they seemed to like it as a present. So After lunch, I took time by myself to return to the village, Lamebe as it's called in the local dialect, and take one last look. I wondered about how much it had changed since my grandfather was last there, and reflected on how remarkable it was to uncover something priceless that you've always had, and all it took was a little digging into the past to find it. Xinjiang is a county-level city in Quanzhou. It borders the East China Sea and is home to just under 2 million people. It's easily reached by plane, as it has its own airport. Xinjiang is not a famous tourist destination, but it has a special charm and significance. Many overseas Chinese, like me, can trace their origins back to Xinjiang, and many make their way here for this reason. Today, the city is known for being an economic powerhouse. But just as thriving industry is securing its future, the people of Xinjiang never stop looking to their past. They live a traditional lifestyle, and within many communities, visitors can find customary clan temples. These buildings are like mini museums, celebrating and recording the histories of Chinese families. They are also sacred places to pray and pay homage to ancestors. But no matter your background, you can pay each a visit and appreciate the stories preserved within their walls. Many of the more prominent families in Fujian have what's called an ancestral hall, and this is quite a beautiful example. It belongs to the Zhuang family clan. Now, descendants of that family, who are now maybe based all over the world, can come back to this place and really feel deeply rooted and learn more about their family dating back to 12 generations. The Zhuang Temple is located within a newly developed area in downtown Jinjiang called Wu Dian Shi, literally meaning five shop district. It contains more than 100 relocated Song and Ming dynasty buildings, so they're between 600 to 1,000 years old. Legend has it that during the Tang Dynasty, there were five restaurants that served such excellent food and were so well run that they made the town famous. Today, each lovingly restored building offers modern travelers a chance to enjoy the city's cultural heritage in a peaceful setting. Here you could spend hours wandering William Shou's lanes maybe popping into some of the buildings to shop for antiques or sip tea. It's not so much a blast from the past as maybe a quiet whisper from days back then. You know, I'm sitting in the middle of the city, but looking around me, you really wouldn't guess it. I'm sitting here in the Rudentia area, and what it is is a collection of various old buildings from around the city brought to one place to be refurbished then rebuilt. And what it does is give visitors a sense of what Jinjiang might have been like more than 100 years ago or farther down the past. And for those overseas Chinese who come here who have their roots in the city, I think it's a really cool thing to be able to experience what their relatives might have lived like. Fujian's industry and prosperity is in part thanks to its location. Bordering the sea, it was an important commercial port and for centuries the scene of bustling international exchange. Little wonder Xinjiang remains quite diverse today.
Many local families have influences from other cultures and religions within their ancestral lines. Local culture mixed with and adapted elements of Christianity, Manichaeism, and Islam. This is easily seen when stepping into the temple of the Ding clan. A branch of this family have their origins in Persia, and while not all Ding descendants practice Islam, many strongly identify with their Muslim heritage. The Ding Ancestral Temple is situated next to the Jinjiang Mosque. Its large size and good upkeep reflects the fact that many of the Ding clan now live all over the world, with sizable branches of the family today making their homes in Indonesia, Malaysia and Singapore. Having come from the Ding Ancestral Hall, you really get a sense of the Muslim culture that was brought to Jinjiang. But, if you can hear that music coming from this room, I realise that the culture from Jinjiang is today still brought elsewhere. Let's go have a look. The upstairs room of this community centre is the base of this local Nanyin group. Nanyin translates as music from the south and is also known as thousand-year-old music. The ancient genre uses traditional Chinese instruments and its songs are sung in southern Chinese dialects. Nanyin first flourished during the Tang period around 1400 years ago and was often played in imperial courts. Today, it's considered a living fossil amongst traditional Chinese music. These musicians are passionate about Nanyin and have traveled together across Asia, performing for international audiences. Nanyin's lyrics are poetic and romantic, reflecting the lives of the local people through the ages. Songs tell tales about heroes and heroines, or of lost love or longing for a home far away. I guess having such universal themes is one of the reasons Nanyin remains popular in Southeast Asia. After their soothing performance, I learned that many of these men not only went overseas for their music, but had family overseas, or either worked and lived overseas themselves. Some even spent time in the Philippines, just like my grandfather. Eventually, my curiosity got the better of me, and I couldn't resist giving their instruments a go. <laughs> Well, they, they kind of showed me the basic fingering for this, but I am, um, yeah, it still sounds awful. So I think I might leave it to the to the professionals or the people at least know exactly how to use it. Though. <laughs> Coming up next, travel adventures to the outskirts of Xinjiang, where we learn more about the seafaring traditions of the locals and get involved in a game of mahjong or two.
My short time in Xinjiang has so far been filled with encounters with travelers. Millions of overseas Chinese can trace their roots back to Fujian shore, my own family included. As I walk along, I wonder just how many stood here, facing the wild ocean and deciding that a new life waited on the other side. And how many more returned, seeking the unique customs and traditions of home? Well, if it's traditions you're looking for, Jinjiang is the right place for it. And today, we're exploring the outskirts. Now, those making their way across the seas from Fujian might have made some very special prayers ahead of their journey. They might have come to a temple like this one. This is dedicated to the goddess of Mazu. Now, she ensures that those who go across the seas arrive at their destination safely. And if they're going on a windy day like this, well, I think they're probably going to need her help. One man who might have prayed to Mazu was Shi Long, a maritime admiral who served the Ming and Qing courts. He spent much of his life on high seas, but a lot remains of his life on land. Tourists who venture beyond Jinjiang Center can visit his impressive courtyard home, which still stands today. It's a grand example of southern Fujian architecture, with characteristic red stone and elaborate decorative features. Exploring the quiet grounds of Shi Lang's abode, I notice some noise coming from next door and decide to investigate. I come across another ancestral hall with a bit of a recreational center in the backyard. You know, it may seem like ancestral halls are quiet, solemn places without any life in them, but just looking back here, you see that they're very much still an active part of the community. People come here to play, to chat, to catch up. Um, and it really is a center of society here in Fuji. It's a friendly, informal atmosphere. The locals tell me they come here when they have the time, sit at a table, and play. Everyone's welcome, even me. You know, I don't actually know how to play mahjong myself. But from what I understand, every area has its own version. There are different rules. This particular style I've never seen before, but it seems that you arrange them in a particular way. I guess it's sort of Tetris, making different patterns when you have um, different symbols in common. Okay, so I'm not too helpful in playing this game, but I'm an expert at sitting back and watching. And I realize that, in a way, life in Jinjiang is very much about what's happening around me. Openness, simple pleasures, and community. Three things really worth coming home to. So we're leaving the city of Jinjiang and are on our way to Xiamen with a convoy of my family members. And I have to say, I've really enjoyed my time in Jinjiang. There's a lot of historic places to visit, but at the same time, it's a very modern city with lots of restaurant options, lots of hotel options. And by the way, you can stay at a really nice hotel in Jinjiang for just about 255. And um, the rate of development makes it so surprising to me that we were still able to visit old places such as my grandfather's village and see his old house. That was really a moving moment for me. And the time I spent in Jinjiang will be time that I definitely won't easily forget. An easy two and a half hours later. Well, we've arrived in Xiam and I'm sitting in front of this beautiful school, which is the D Middle School. And it's in this leafy educational precinct of Tine. Now, this area exists thanks to the work of one man, a Fujian businessman named Chen Jiagong. He made his fortune abroad and then returned to Fujian and invested in this area, which has lots of schools and university buildings. And it really reflects the, the value of education and, and its importance to the Fujian people. Speaking of Fujian people, Mr. Chen was just telling us a little bit about the architecture here. The roof is Chinese building. And this time they move ahead. The others are Western buildings, also called Western Star Clothes. They are called Wedding Western Star Clothes and put in on them move ahead. We miss the Chen Jiang's country idea. 
Well, that's what I call multicultural design. This place is full of pleasant surprises in its people as well as its atmosphere. You know, I really love walking around this place. It's got this really relaxed feeling, like you can strike up a conversation with anybody, like Mr. Chen, who randomly gave us a, a little guide for just about 50 quai, by the way. It's got this really relaxed feel with the tourists and the students walking around. It's almost romantic, too. I kind of envy those who get to study here, although I don't know how much studying I'd get done.